the Aquatic Toxicology Laboratory at St. Cloud State University studies all of these compounds that generally are referred to as endocrine disruptors. The whole question of what is an endocrine disruptor, and we got tons of them going into our water supplies. We got 70,000 chemicals we've never tested for endocrine disruptor, other than one way or the outputs of industry or our own personal use. And they're all ending up out there. Essentially, an endocrine disruptor is any pollutant, any compound that interacts with biological pathways in an organism. In other words, anything that can slightly tweak what we do naturally is an endocrine disruptor. Hormones are the naturally produced compounds that are designed to interact with the endocrine receptors in our body. Endocrine disruptors can be these hormones, and for example, in urine that we excrete, and that ends up in wastewater treatment plants, of course, contains these hormones. But endocrine disruptors can also be pharmaceuticals that interact with the same endocrine receptors, or they can be very different products, personal care products, masks and fragrances, shampoos and soaps, detergents, that also can interact with these endocrine receptors. Many detergents contain compounds that allow lipids and waters to mix. Usually oil and water don't mix, but we, of course, when we try to clean laundry, or when we try to clean dishes, we want lipids to come off our dishes, so we use these detergents and it has turned out, even though their chemical structure is quite different, these detergents will interact with the same endocrine receptors in the body, and so they act just like these hormones, um, even though they have a very different origin and chemical structure. Mood-altering drugs, things like Prozac and, and Wellbutrin and other compounds, uh, they are suggested to be endocrine disruptors as well. So, for example, there's been a lot of notoriety with certain drugs. One, for example, would be Prozac, which has been detected in a few fish. So people snicker and make sarcastic comments about our fish being on antidepressants. One example that is really um, causing all of us in the aquatic toxicology community to shake our heads, uh, the emergence of antibacterial soaps. You know, every soap now seems to be antibacterial. Those compounds are endocrine disruptors, and there's absolutely no need for them in most households. Which is in everything now. It's in dial, it's in, your, it's in toothpaste, it's in a number of other products. But we know it has a problem in the long term in being in the environment. The increase in the use of soy, which is an estrogen mimic, as feed for cattle primarily, as other basis for an awful lot of food has contributed enormously to the presence of estrogen-like materials in our environment. Soy has what is usually referred to as phytoestrogens or plant estrogens. So these plants produce a compound that is very similar to the estrogen we find in vertebrates and in, in, in many animals, um, the hormone that is usually referred to as the female hormone, the estrogen. So many soy products, all soy products, contain estrogen formula is based on soy products and so the exposure of infants to phytoestrogens is many times higher than the exposure of it, most adults in their diet to phytoestrogens. We've done a lot of recent testing on bisphenol A plasticizer that we, pretty, we know is an endocrine disruptor. We've tested it on mice and come up with you know, some pretty definitive results in terms of what we're doing. We know it's in the water supply. We know it's in the waste stream. It's fairly long-lasting. Um, we know it's more in plastic bottles, which we're right now we're working on. You know, uh, well, we're arguing about still. Canada banned them. The United States hasn't. Europe is ambiguous. But we know that there's an endocrine disruptor that's available to us. And the biggest concern is baby bottles.